What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Land of the Land, episode three. I'm here with Nick Saberwolf Parenti. Say hello. Hi. Yo, what's up? Jeff the JA Effect Adams. Hey, hello. Dustin Hell's Misfit Coomer. And of course, I am Hugo Stiggs, aka Zeus's Left Pectoral. So we bring you here today to talk about a few things: cookie cutter game design, GXL, and Pico's first land in over two years. So to take it away, we have Nick here on the floor. Dude, I'm just impressed that you got Coomer's last name correct. He's been trying for like the last <laughs> fucking 20 minutes to get that shit right. <laughs> All right, guys, it's been um, it's been about a month since we've done a, a lay of the land, and uh, we got some we got some news. So that's typically what we use these for. We use these for a news front, but. The one thing that I wanted to focus on, it's a little bit different this time, is we wanted to announce a partnership with uh, Game On Party Planners. They will run our console section for, I guess, the foreseeable future at every Pitco event. Uh, I don't know if Dustin wants to give you a little information about his company, but they uh, they were at the last Ironstorm event that we had, and it was, it was pretty impressive, his setup. Um, I posted a video... It's probably one of my favorite Pitco videos of all time of a Street Fighter 4 tournament that we had where Dustin gets his ass beat in the finals <laughs> by, uh, by a gentleman uh, by game guy. Game yeah. guy. And he, was, uh, he was talking some smack the whole time and ended up losing. So I don't know if he wants to go ahead and tell you a little bit about himself, a little bit about his company, but I'll leave, uh, leave it up to him. I definitely don't want to talk about that Street Fighter match. That just ain't going to happen. We're just going to let, let the past be the past. But, uh, yeah, Game On's been established since, like, 2011. Uh, we're actually, right now, the only land center, true land center, that specializes in eSports and uh, Call of Duty tournaments right now. So we, we're just, we're blowing up right now. So we're really happy to be on board with Pitco, that's for sure. And we can't wait to uh, get started with, with some events in the future. And, man, we're pumped, man. I can't wait to do some more tournaments. It's going to be great. Yeah, whenever we post this podcast on the, the YouTube page, we'll make sure to put some links out to Dustin's website because you can log on there and you can actually see he's got a lot of images up of the events that they hold. And, I mean, it's pretty impressive. The setup that they bring to the lands, the setup that he has at his place, It's if you want to go play in a Call of Duty tournament, that's the place to go, uh, especially if you're around, you know, Pittsburgh regionally. It's, you know, it's a really awesome place. 100% payouts, guys. 100% payouts. That's, I mean, Every tournament. If you're uh, if you're looking for the competitive scene in Pittsburgh, look no further than uh, than than Game On. They definitely have it going on, and they always have stuff going on too, which is really cool. You know, we do Pitco stuff once a year, once every six months. Dustin's got shit going on all the time. So, oh yeah, every month, almost every weekend actually now. So that's cool. Social events too, not just competitive. There's something for everybody. You know, so if you want to take your date instead of going to the movies. In a nice restaurant, if you want to park her in front of an Xbox <laughs> yeah. one and play some Killer Instinct, yeah. one, you'd have a really good date on your hands. Go on and, you know, a keeper, two, <laughs> you actually get to do something that you want to do. <laughs> girls are welcome. They may get mobbed, but girls are welcome. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's it's like the, little, like, the comic store and, uh, yeah. in the Big Bang Theory. There you go. There you go. All right, well, we like to start these things off by talking about... um. Uh, a relatively interesting topic uh, this week, well, this this podcast, we're going to actually talk about cookie cutter game design, and this was a topic that was introduced to me by the JA Effect. I really never thought anything about it until I, I started in, doing a little uh, investigation into it, and it's it's really surprising um, how, we'll say the last seven years, game progression has kind of been at a halt, in my opinion. And uh, we put together uh, a bunch of slides to kind of showcase this. I don't know what the other people's opinions are on this panel, but um, I'm going to briefly go through a couple examples of cookie cutter game design. I don't know if anybody want to have some some initial thoughts before we get into this. Start with you, Hugo. No, I pretty much got nothing. All right, Jeff. Uh, I'll get I'll get to what what kind of led me to this uh, a little bit later. Um, yeah, but I, I I do have some thoughts. We'll we'll get to it later. All right, what about you, Dustin? No, nah, I'm good. Nah, so, okay, so I'm going to jump right into this. All right, so first, what I wanted to, uh, to use as an example were PC games that, say, came out 20 years ago. And the progression that these specific games made up through uh, a specific genre or a franchise, and how you could see the progression of these games 
Um, not only from the sense that, okay, yeah, it's the new version of the game, but there were different things that changed throughout. I'm going to address these when I show you in the slides. So I, Let me just say that I can't believe that these games that we're about to look at have been out for 20 years. I know, That's it's, it's awful. Yeah. It kind of, you know, it <laughs> makes me depressing. feel old. I hate feeling old, but all right, wow. so let me jump into this. We have this first slide I'm going to show you guys is actually, um, these are screenshots. These are full-size screenshots of these two games. So this was the actual resolution of the game. I'm not, I'm not shitting you. The Warcraft was actually 640 by 400. That was the original <laughs> resolution for that game. Warcraft 2 was 640 by 480. But if we looked at these two games, so Warcraft came out in 1994, and it was, you know, it, it blew people away in the sense of an RTS. It wasn't the first RTS, um, but it was really the first RTS that that people grasped onto. It was a franchise that they could foresee being something greater in the future. We jump one year into Warcraft 2, and as you guys can see, you can see the HUD changed a little bit, uh, the amount of viewable screen changed, the graphics changed, but what was much different about this game was that there there was much more to it. You know, there was more substance. The story was more involved. The, the units had more abilities to do, you know, different things throughout the game. And then we jump one year, or I'm sorry, two years ahead, and we can see the difference between Warcraft 2 and StarCraft, where the HUD drastically changed. We went from a side HUD to a bottom HUD. The perspective changed, and not only did we go from one race, which was orcs versus humans, and a lot of people say these are two completely different franchises, but I, I'm going to tell you right now, they're not. They're basically the same game. Mm -hmm. We go from orcs versus humans to three distinct races that not only um, have different naming conventions, but they have a, a completely separate dynamics. If you looked at orcs versus humans, there were a lot of units that were very similar. In StarCraft, no units were similar. Uh, every race had its its completely own diverse skill set. We we'll jump ahead one more year, and you can see the difference between StarCraft and Warcraft Three. So you take all the good things about StarCraft, you move it back to the Warcraft genre, um, and you they they actually embraced all the differences. So now there's there's three races in Warcraft. You have the what was it the undead, uh, the orcs, and the humans. But each race had its own characteristics. Everything was completely different. There was no similarities like there were between uh, the units in Warcraft 2 and Warcraft 1. And then we jump ahead. This is good. This is going to be the drastic jump, right? So we go from Warcraft 3 in 1998, which this game spawned mods, Dota, everything that we like to play nowadays. And we jump all the way to 2010. And uh, we're looking at StarCraft 2, which they improved upon every aspect of the RTS whether it be Warcraft 3 or StarCraft, they took this game and they made it absolutely amazing. Uh, completely improved HUD, uh, massive amounts of units, uh, they introduced new units, just everything was just so refined compared to the original StarCraft. Even though the original StarCraft is very popular, this game took it to another level. And what, I, what I'm trying to, to, to basically showcase here in these slides is that Whenever we talk about game progression, in 1998, Blizzard as a company, I don't think knew what to do in the sense that, okay, hey, what are we going to do with these franchises? What can we do to make these games better? And then there was a sense of a hiatus. Okay, so we're going to take an, a certain period of time to develop these games, and we're going to wait until we have something that we can introduce that's new. Because there's no point in putting out another game unless we have something new. This isn't Madden football. You know, our players are changing from year to year. But, on the other hand, we have companies like um, Call of Duty. <laughs> Activision. Yes, Activision. Well, you know, I don't know if Activision <clears throat> owned Call of Duty the whole way through. But I, I made this graphic here so you can see a progression. We had games that came out. The original Call of Duty was 2003. Okay, people were blown away by that game. It was, um, it was basically like a refined version of Medal of Honor. And everybody was blown away by Medal of Honor when it originally came out. When we had Call of Duty 2 come out. And I have Call of Duty 3 on this graphic, but Call of Duty 3 and Call of Duty 2 were basically the exact same game. The only difference is Call of Duty 3 was a console exclusive game. 
So that's why you Man, see the year to year. Exactly. Yeah, it wasn't very so, good at all. <laughs> but what I'm saying is you could see the progression between Call of Duty and Call of Duty 2, the graphic enhancements, the different things that they added to the game. Then we went from 2005, we'll just exclude 2006, 2005 to 2007, we have arguably the best Call of Duty ever. I don't even think you can... Well, I mean, the only one that you can really put it up against would be Call of Duty 2. Call of Duty 2 was what really started defining the first-person shooter uh, multiplayer experience. Oh, very, but, very true. Very but, true. And but, yeah, competitive, too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Yeah. So, you, but, if you had so your now, you, now you go to Modern Warfare. Yeah, right? so you have your COD 2, which is your, your competitive uh, World War II game, and you go to Modern Warfare. Call of Duty 4, which was your competitive, you know, realistic... Which I'm doing a tournament shooter. this yeah, it month. Was your, it was this your month. console game. <laughs> it was your Counter Strike for consoles, is basically what it was. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. that also transitioned into the PC market too, because they had their dedicated servers, everything. But it was almost like once they hit Modern Warfare and they saw the potential of this franchise, instead of stopping like a company like Blizzard did and said, "Okay, hey, what can we do to progress this game into the future?" They marketed it and they treated it like a Madden football. And as you can see, every year from that point on, we have. Call of Duty World at War, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Call of Duty Black Ops, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, Call of Duty Ghost, and then in this upcoming November we will see Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. All of those games are the same game. And yep. there's no there might be slight intricacies that change from game to game that the 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 knife action is different in this game or how you crouch is different in this game. But there's no increase in, in tech. There's no increase in how we view the game. Where whenever we went from a game, say, like Warcraft 1 to Warcraft 2, it was a completely different experience. The experiences that we see between uh, Black Ops 2 and Ghosts are the fact that people hate Ghosts. That's basically what it comes down to. It's not Black Ops. But there's nothing different beyond the games other than we have a, a console community that's split between a newest gen uh, version of the game and an older gen version of the game. That's it. That's all we have. So, I don't know. If we, if we want to go back and address some of these things, uh, maybe talk about a little Call of Duty and, and see if anybody has any, any points on this stuff. All right, I'm first. Well, so, uh, right, no, I get, I get first. So, um, for those who are watching in the chat, um, I, I put up a I put up a YouTube video that is um, kind of the quintessential cookie cutter. This is what spurred my interest in wanting to talk about this. Um, so, in Modern Warfare 2, uh, there's a scene, the very end, for those who have played it, um, where you're getting ready to get on a helicopter. And in Ghosts, uh, and I haven't played the story in Ghosts because I'm over the whole uh, Call of Duty situation that they have going on. But it's the same scene. It's literally, I mean, you talk about cookie cutter. This is someone making something the first time and then just doing it again. It's literally the same scene. It's about, a, what, a, maybe a 30-second clip. Um, it, it's, it's, it's the overage of, of finding something that works and continuing to do it, um, literally to the point where they use the same code. Uh, Call of Duty, I mean, you can ask damn near anyone. Uh, Call of Duty was my game uh, up until about Modern Warfare 2. Uh, that was when it ended for me because it was just the same game, an expansion of the same game, yep. being released every year for the same price. Um, you know, that, that's, that's basically where it came down for me, but I mean, this is the quintessential cookie cutter. W what's interesting is how many other companies are starting to do it. Um, so you have EA with, with Battlefield, right? Um, the biggest problem in the past year and what's probably made the most news uh, in in first person shooter, uh, at least in the past year, has been Battlefield sucks. <laughs> it was released as an unfinished game, and everyone knows it. They're just now releasing a patch next week that's going to solve the netcode issues that have been plaguing the game since release. It's goddamn June. The game came out in what October? So six yep. months, eight months after the fact, you're fixing it. Well, congratulations. Why didn't you delay it? Well, because they had to have the cookie cutter recipe. They needed a game every single year. Call of Duty started it, and it's really starting to spill over into every other game series, at least it's popular right now. Um, the only reason that I'm interested in Advanced Warfare is because Kevin Spacey's in it. That's it. <laughs> That's what you have going for you? That's not enough. I don't know, Dustin, you seem like you had some opinion on this. Well, Call of Duty, man, that's... 
I, I'm not so much going to harp on the single player. I like all the single players, man. I play everything. But as far as the competitive side of things, it doesn't matter what they come out with from this point on because the last three years, Call of Duty and the eSports has just exploded. Exploded. In fact, it's exploded so much that Halo has completely died. So right now, the console Sadly. gamers, all they have is Call of Duty, and a lot of the Halo players have tran you know transcended over to Call of Duty. So literally for console gamers, Call of Duty is all they got. So no matter what Call of Duty comes <clears throat> out, now that they got like three developers cranking these things out every other year, I mean, that's, that's why they're able to crank them out so fast. I mean, you got what? Sledgehammer, you got Treyarch, and you got uh, Infinity Ward, right? Did yeah. I miss anybody? So, I mean... They're going to keep yet. cranking these things out. Say what? You haven't missed anyone yet. Okay, yeah. Who yeah, so you will probably be far. number four very, very soon. But, I don't know. As far as esports is concerned, Call of Duty is dominating in the console era. Um, I don't know. I, I definitely think that they've lost some some awe, so to speak, over over the course of, of just going from Call of Duty to Call of Duty. And you're starting, and, and Jeff's right, you know, going through these... Uh, these campaigns, you're starting to see a lot of the same like slow motion sequences, and you know what I mean. Like it's it's starting to get a little repetitive. I mean, I still enjoy playing them, but I guarantee that I would say 75 to 80 percent of the Call of Duty following. Number one, if you hate the game, you're gonna buy it. If you love the game, you're gonna buy it. And if you play Call of Duty multiplayer, you're gonna buy it regardless. So that's why Call of Duty sells so well, in my opinion, anyway. So just Damn, the shame right. of it is, is that it goes, it literally is following into every, uh, at least in, in, from what I can see, it's it's going into every intellectual property that most of these companies have now. Like, even whenever you get into a game like Watch Dogs that was just released, at the very end they tease a sequel. Um, is it going to be out next year? Uh, who, you know, ten people in the world know the answer to that question, but... I wouldn't be surprised. You know, it, you just take the same engine and repeat it. Why not? Uh, the game sold 4 million copies in its first week. What does Call of Duty do? Or around the same. Probably, um, if, probably more, actually. Yeah. So if you're if you're getting that kind of a jump from a game, why not just make it again the next year? Um, and, I mean, Battlefield's another good example. They have, and, and this is a little bit different, their new game, Battlefield Hardline. You know, it's going to be cops versus robbers. But they do have a game coming out in the fall. Um What's what's the difference between that and Call of Duty? There really isn't one other than the storyline. If it's you? anything like Payday, I'm stoked. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Stiggs? What do you think? Well, I mean, pretty much what he was saying about Halo, just like that, just like brought tears and like all my memories, just like of childhood, just gone because like that was one of my first series I started playing on Xbox 360 was Halo 3. And whenever he said that like Call of Duty is dominating so much, where Halo just disappeared, I didn't think about it until he said that. I'm like, oh my god, he's right. That's just the most <laughs> saddest thing I've ever heard because Halo was one of the best. Like, like I remember coming to Pitco and it was a Halo 3 competition and it was a Halo 4 competition or not Halo 4, but I'm sorry, like other Halo different competi uh, competitions. And they were so hyped up too. They were so good. And now like will Pitco even have one? Well, just just so we're clear on that, uh, reigning Halo championship team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I got a but, question for you, Dustin, in, in yeah. regards to all this. Do you remember a couple years ago when Madden was like everywhere? Yeah. You know, like where they, you know, you you turn on ESPN at two o'clock in the morning and they were doing the Madden tour and everybody was talking about Madden. Everybody was having Madden tournaments for big cash payouts and all this different stuff. Do you hear anybody talking about Madden? Right now? No, I don't. All right. Actually, and I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but I see the same path that basically is happening with Call of Duty. I, I think it might be. I'm not going to say it's a fad, but it, I, I think if they if they remove the limelight from this game, there's the possibility that it might turn into the next Madden in the sense that, you know, what's why am I buying the next version of the game? Well, here's here's the deal with esports. We're piggybacking companies like me. We're piggybacking off of MLG. Yeah. So if MLG picks it up, it's it's going to go competitive. I mean, one way or the other. Like, everybody thought Titanfall was going to go competitive. 
MLG didn't pick it up. They didn't add LAN, which is a big, big deal when it comes to esports. If you don't have LAN in a game, it's gonna die. It's gonna die in at least the the competitive scene. Casual tournaments, that's that's kind of a different ball game. But as far as like esports are concerned, if it doesn't have LAN, it's gonna die. So Madden, I think Madden. I want to try Madden. I want to do a Madden tournament. I think I think there's still a community out there for it. Especially when, like, Madden 2015 comes out. Is it 2015? Am I right on that? Yeah. Uh, what's the year? <laughs> yeah, it's 2014, so it's always a year ahead. So 20, Madden 2015 or whatever uh, is probably going to be – I'll probably try, you know, a Madden tournament. But um, I don't know. I just – I think everything piggybacks off of MLG, which, you know, I wish I could just say, hey, man, let's do a uh, – Hell, let's do a, a Call of Duty 2 tournament and get, like, 20 teams. It just it won't happen. If MLG doesn't have it, it's just not going to go go big. So it's, it's kind of a sad fact, but <laughs> maybe we can change that one day. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to play devil's advocate here because, you know, I, I despise the Call of Duty series, and it's something that I don't hide. But a lot of people say, well, hey, you know, the, the reason why there's no – progression there's no advancement in these games is because we've reached a point in game development and game design where everything is so good the only thing that we can improve upon in the next version is the story or the just the content in the game and a lot of people say that that's specific to the first person shooter genre in the sense that okay hey we've experienced everything when it comes to first person shooters and i actually put a graphic together uh, this little series, I don't know if you guys know anything about it, but this is a perfect example of um, progression and how we've seen it stop with other series. So let me switch over to this slide. And yes, we're looking at Quake. Okay, so the first Quake came out in 1996. Uh, the next Quake, Quake 2, 97. Quake 3 Team Arena was 99. And Quake 4 was 2005. So if we look at, if we look at this, I'm actually going to just kind of briefly go over this the whole way down. Quake... If, you know, it, it introduced us to a first-person shooter on the PC in the sense that it was, it was like next level. It it blew Doom out of the water. Um, yep. All the other games that were out there at the time. I mean, if you look at all those other ID games, Heretic and Hexen, and you know, games like that, they were all that same. I don't even know what you want to classify those games as, but the pixelated single-level bullshit. But Quake, truly 3D. It had some story to it i couldn't tell you what the hell it was though it was, <laughs> it was difficult the game was difficult and you could put it on a difficulty level that, that you know made doom laugh and the graphics were just out of this world for the time especially because it was a dos game i mean absolutely amazing graphics and then we go one year later to quake 2 which was an open gl capable game which i don't know if you guys remember the first time you played counter-strike and you could switch over to open gl from direct x and your mind was fucking blown. <laughs> um, but the graphics were drastically improved. It had online multiplayer. Um, but the focus was still around the single player campaign. Actually, the primary focus was the single player campaign. And it developed this massive following. I mean, just... People don't understand what Quake 2 did for the online multiplayer community. I mean, if you look at IRC to this day, one of the biggest IRC channels out there is QuakeNet. And QuakeNet was spawned specifically because of Quake 2. QuakeNet was the reason, or Quake was the re Quake 2 was the reason why Half-Life multiplayer games were so big. Because people saw the potential in Quake 2. And then we jump two years ahead and we take that multiplayer focus that was completely discovered in Quake 2 and we come out with Quake 3 Team Arena. Which, I don't know if anybody plays Quake Live, but that is Quake 3 Team Arena. It is... It is Quake Live. Quake Live and Quake 3 Team Arena are the exact same game, except you play it in a browser now. But that game was so massive that it is still one of the the, the major mainstays in gaming competitions at Pitco events. A fucking game that came out in 1999. But the focus was, it was entirely on multiplayer. There was no single player campaign. The single player campaign was you destroying bots on different levels. But um, it was a game that decided to take specific advantages of the pc whenever it said okay hey we're going to require a card that had open gl and then we have in 2005 so we're looking at six years later quake 4 came out do you hear anybody ever talk about quake 4 anybody no no no, no. you know no. why because it's the same hmm. fucking game as every other game that was out at the time 
It I was still have they, it on they PC. basically took a game that had a, a huge multiplayer following in Quake Three and thought, hey, if we just make another cookie cutter bullshit game and we throw the Quake name on it, people will buy it. And here's here's the interesting thing. So look at the look at the look at the timing of it. So nineteen ninety six to two thousand and five, and that was basically the death of Quake. Where are we at with Call of Duty? Two thousand and three to twenty fourteen. You're about ten years. Yep. Um, you know, is Advanced Warfare going to be the the death of Call of Duty? Probably not. It, but I mean, th there's no question that they're on the downturn. Ghost was one of the worst releases that Activision has had in this in this series, mainly because of the console switch. But I mean, if you're going to get if the technology gets any better, uh, and you start seeing more interactive games, games that are just blowing the socks out of everything that was that was conceived before. Uh, I mean, what's to say it's not going to die? What's to say that Call of Duty is not going to fall in that same trap that Quake did? I think a lot of it has to do with the, the forgiveness of the console community. I think the PC community is much harsher on a game. A PC community, if you if you take a game and say, hey, this is going to be PC exclusive, and it doesn't hold up, you know, it doesn't hold water, that's it. That's the death of the game. And the console community... Say they decided to put a Quake game out every year and they had one good seller. I have a feeling that that game would sell consistently well every year. The only but reason the only reason I disagree with you is Medal of Honor. I they put out game. they put out uh, they put out a bad game and it's dead just like that. What what Medal of Honor was that? Just to refresh my memory, that was Warfighter. Uh, Medal of Honor Warfighter. Warfighter. It was the what the f I guess it would have been the second in the rebooted series but yeah, the first was one the was second. not bad it wasn't bad at all and then warfighter was terrible uh just a, just a horrible idea in how to play multiplayer they they limited the amount of people that could play on a team it just it what it, it didn't work and i mean it's 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 been shelved so um i mean i don't disagree i, I think that console players are a lot more forgiving um you know we're on seven or eight bad call of duty games and it's still going so um you know they're letting it go, and I I'm sure that there's going to be another, you know, large warfare style battlefield that's going to come out after this cops and robbers thing. So um, I'm sure that it's going to happen. But yeah, I I games can be killed just as just as easily on console. But if you have the money to back it, uh, I don't know. I can see it going a little bit further. That's the thing. I don't think if you look at a game like what you said warfighter i don't even remember the marketing campaign around it honestly don't i honestly don't even remember you know i mean you just look at call of duty every year how much money they dump into marketing you know you know you'd see like a super bowl ad for fucking call of duty you don't see i don't i could not even remember the last time i i couldn't remember a medal of honor ad at all so i don't know i guess it's 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 up to whoever watches this video to decide to see if I mean, how do you feel about it, viewers? Do you feel that that the gaming industry is is embracing the cookie cutter concept, and just keep churning and burning the same shit, and we're gonna just gonna keep eating it up, or uh, are we gonna see some serious progression in games over the next couple years? So I don't know if, if anybody else has any closing thoughts, Dustin. Nah, uh, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave this alone. I'll be talking all night. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Stiggs? Um, pretty much, you guys pretty much said everything. We'll leave the last word to Jeff then. I mean, let's just hope that things change. Uh, I mean, you, you know the Call of Duty's a lost cause. Uh, it looks like Battlefield's the same way. Uh, those are two games that, that were fantastic. Let's just hope that all these new intellectual properties like Watch Dogs, um, Tom Clancy's The Division, um, that looks really good. Destiny, for Christ's sake. Let's hope they all, let's just hope things change. Right. I just want something fresh, man. Oh, I I, that's the last man. thought. I just need like I thought Titanfall was it, man. I really did, and and it's it's a great game, but it got boring so quick. But I think Titanfall has a great foundation that they they can build off of. That's that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna. Even... <laughs> I feel like the Titanfall is really the 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 one. Like they took a chance. You know what I mean? Like they they took a chance. They did something different. I mean, dude, it's like Call of Duty with mechs. I mean, and it looks see, like that's picked up. I mean, it looks like with Advanced Warfare, we're going to see some of that. It looks like yeah. that they've influenced. I mean, that's 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 good. At least there's something. Um, that's cool. We're going to see Call of Duty 2142. Yeah, oh, man. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Whoops. Did that I goes get, back did I to something else, right? Did I blow and some lines? Full oh, circle. Oh, man. Did, did, have we circle. seen this game before? Oh, man. 
Uh, Listen, I, I will buy Call of Duty full price right now if they put Dwayne the Rock Johnson in it. And he, I, I want it to be so detailed <laughs> where he's sweating in every scene. That's what I want. So you have like you know, one hand on your Xbox controller, your other hand. Oh, never mind. All right, you so mean, let's, uh, I'll have my left hand. Just... <laughs> let's get actually to the, the mainstay of uh, Lay of the Land and uh, let's talk about some lands. So uh, the first one we want to get to is um, our, our, our good buddies in, in um, New Jersey. Philadelphia, uh, the eastern side of this wonderful state. Let's jump in here. We have the GXO, which um, they've had registration open for a hot minute, but um, we just wanted to finalize and tell you guys the dates because on the last podcast we didn't. We just said it was announced. We're looking at October 10th and 12th this year at the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center. Um, The GXO is the real deal. I I mean, I, I know we touched on this a little bit, during the last podcast but uh this land if you play competitive counter-strike or competitive team fortress which i know there are huge communities behind each and you're looking for a legit competition to go to on the east coast this is the place to go i mean they treat their what they consider professional tournaments they treat them on another level and um the GXL in October, somehow they have a land every, well, not every fall, but they, they hold their lands in the fall. They have huge turnouts. I mean, absolutely huge turnouts. Uh, and I'd say at least half the field is there in a competitive sense. I know a lot of people, because of the location, Philly, um, they use this as a place to, more like a social event for, for these these guys that, you know, you've you've played with for the, for the last three or four years at this game and you've never met this is a perfect opportunity, you know, to sit down, make your travel plans, and then meet up with with your uh, fellow gamers. It is it is a legit real deal land, and uh, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I will be there 100% in October. I don't know if anybody had some thoughts on the GXL. I mean, what I didn't even know it was happening. That <laughs> well, that's because you knew, Dustin. You gotta, you gotta. You gotta... You gotta be around us a little bit longer to. to, to yeah, know what's going I guess on. I do. So let me actually, I'm gonna pull up the GXL's website here, and I'm gonna talk about, or at least tell you what other tournaments they're holding. Um, they do a, a stipulation where they talk about, um, they're called Pro Series events. Those are the events that I, I talked about that they take very, very seriously. They'll have an extremely large field. Uh, the entire event will be casted by. Um, I'm, Pretty sure it's EXTV, if I'm not mistaken. Let me let me uh, pull this up just to make sure. Uh, yes, EXTV will be casting the entire event. Um, these guys are huge on TF2. Uh, they know everything that there is to know about the competitive scene, and uh, like I said, it will be a real deal. But they are having several other tournaments just because of the sheer scale of the event, which they always do. Um, beyond Team Fortress 2 and Counter Strike Go, we have Dota 2, StarCraft 2. Unreal Tournament 2K4, doing a little flashback. I like that. Uh, some Trackmania, Left 4 Dead, and Hearthstone. And then they have wow. one of the biggest console sections. No offense, Dustin, but uh, this thing is fucking cool. huge. I mean, absolutely amazing. They have a guy that literally brings a tra- like a tractor trailer of console shit in, and they set up fucking everything that you can think of. Um, Halo 4, Gran Turismo 5, Guitar Hero 3, Tetris... Mario Power Tennis, Ultra Street Fighter 4, Mo- Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom, Super Smash Bros. 64, Melee, and Brawl. Oh, they're also wow. going to have it on Wii U, and they're going to play WarioWare, Inc. on GameCube. And they will have a tournament for every one of these games. And these aren't these aren't the only things that they'll have there. Uh, they'll have consoles set up for everything, retro consoles, everything. But these are the games. Are these cash have payout tournaments. tournaments? I'm sorry. Are these cash payout no, tournaments? Or they're are they... not cash payout tournaments. They will have a prize okay. associated to them, but they're not cash payout tournaments. So um, the only tournament that I know that has a legitimate cash payout is Team Fortress 2. I think they have a prize of five grand, if I'm not mistaken. Damn. Really? Nice. Wow. It's either five grand or two grand. I don't know. They had it. They announced it on their Facebook. But I think it's it's either five grand or two grand. I know there's a big discrepancy there, but. It's, I don't know, flip the two over, it's a five, whatever. But it's still more than what you would think to be at a LAN party. So, um, and I imagine they'll do some kind of buy-in for the Counter-Strike GO tournament. And it, they, the, the, with the typical number of teams that they have show up, that payout will be pretty substantial, too. So, huh. 
Um, I think other than me, none of nobody, none of you guys have been to a GXL. No, I'm nah. pretty excited. Nah. I might actually go. Team, dude, you said Left for Dead. Yeah. That's nuts. That's nuts. I wasn't. That's a curveball. I may have joined in on that. Yeah, you guys. The thing about it is, we need to we need to seriously put together some kind of travel plans and have like a fucking Pittsburgh land bus head out to the uh, party bus. Hey, I'll be nice. there with my camera, so you know. What taking pictures of dudes? And extra batteries. <laughs> Make sure I have extra batteries this time. There Only their biceps. So I don't know oh, if you guys yeah. want to check yeah. out the GXL. Like I said, we'll have information in the the comments section of this video or the, the information section of this video. Uh, definitely check it out. It's 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 a land worth going to, guys. I'm telling you, if you want to experience a big land, you don't want to go very far. Five hours, you can be at the GXL, and you get to see one of our favorite people, uh, Kyle Wild Turk Turk. Well, Wild Turkey Turk. Oh man, how the fuck did I mess that up? Kyle <laughs> Wild Turkey Turk. You know the 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 guy that DJs and is bouncing off the walls at every Pitco event. That's his land, and it's it's definitely worth checking out. So nice. And um, like. I guess we'll get to the most important. Yeah, while we're on the topic. Uh, yeah, the most important, because, you know, this is Pitco's lay of the land. Um, we need to talk about a certain event coming up here in September. And that would be Pitco Presents Revival. And this is September 6th and yeah. 7th. Woo! Wow, so that was like some big ass <laughs> cheers. Who cheered? I, I didn't even have the, the, the overlay up to see who cheered. Was it? I heard Jeff. I did. Okay, that was I Jeff. did a silent cheer. Sh yeah. Silent cheer with the hands up. That's, cool. That's what I did. We see how it is. What? I clap my muscles. <laughs> this is no, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Like, I'm pumped, guys. This is the first legitimate <laughs> Pitco event. Like, I, don't, I can't like downplay the mini lands and the, the sudden lands that we have, but this is going to be the first legitimate putting our feet back in the pool. Land party that Pitco is going to have. Final. And I am pumped. 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 This is only going to be a 24-hour event, guys. But um, like I said, it's going to be – it is a step up from the Southern Lands. We are trying to make our way back to having big-ass lands here in Pittsburgh. But because we've been out of the game for so long, we need to, we need to step back into it slowly to kind of get a feel for where we at where we're at as an organization get a feel for for our audience different things like that but um i don't know if jeff wants to go over some details about this land yeah I, uh, i'd be land. happy to so uh yeah uh, september 6th and 7th um i mean the basics we're still working out uh it looks like uh for for the most part we know that we're going to be looking around 90 seats um uh, we're hoping that uh, that we're going to be opening registration within the next week or so. Um, but you know, ultimately guys, what we're, what we're looking at is the land. Uh, we're going to, we're going to get back into it. We're going to have, you know, 90 people in a room together playing games. Um, that's, that's what Pico has always been about. That's always been our mission statement to, to, to give the, the most quality land in the Pittsburgh area. And, and we assure you, we're not going to let you down. Um, you know, I, I hate to stress on it, but everyone watching this, Everyone who's watching this knows the, the history of Pitco and our internet situations. Um, <laughs> <laughs> everyone knows, so let's just oh, yeah. let's just go over the elephant in the room and say that we solved that problem. Um, you know, we're, we're, where we're hosting it, uh, we're hosting it at the Belmar Middle School, at the Bel Vernon Area High School, or Bel, Ver Ber Bel Vernon Area School District is how I should say that. Yeah. Um, in Bel Vernon, Pennsylvania, um, the school district has fantastic internet. Uh, say it louder. And, Fantastic internet. Louder. Fantastic. How, how fantastic? Uh, yeah, what is 100, that? What is that? 100 megabytes per second up, 100 megabits per second down. And, that is as. Uh, and, what? And, and? And at the time of the land, it will be. I'm, I'm getting to it. So uh, that's, with the, uh, <laughs> that's with the intention of doubling that uh, for both the upload and the download speeds um, within the next couple months. Uh, that will happen before the land. <laughs> Do so, you guys understand how fast so we can download porn fast. with internet so that much. speed? I mean, Mind you know, explosion. How many, you know, it's like, how many so porns much. can you download at once? <laughs> <laughs> There's so um, many porns. It's it's the internet that we've been that we've been happily waiting, not happily, uh, eagerly waiting for. Um, we, we know that you guys don't actually use the internet to game. 
It's all about <laughs> do porn. nothing. You it's don't just, need it. It's just porn. He's but every, every, every goddamn event, we hear about how you can't download your porn, so we took care of it. Porn's <laughs> porn. Nobody downloads a single porn. It's just yeah, porn. Yeah. Well, it depends on the internet that you have. Our previous internet, it was single, but now we're going to go multiple. So um, yes, we're 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 going to have an event, and it's going to be it, it's going to be fantastic. If you can make it, make it. Uh, hopefully, registration will be opening. We don't have a date yet, but within the next uh, within the next couple of weeks, we'll be ready to go. Um, you know, we'll have we'll have seats available. Uh, let's see how quickly we can sell this out. And just to let everybody know, guys, this event is we're more or less using it as a fundraiser land in the sense that uh, we're we're trying to build up a little bit of uh, revenue in order for us to have a large event in the spring that's the idea we want to get back to doing the big events that you guys know and love us for and uh, the only way to do that is to like i said gauge our audience and have a little cushion for the pushing of the big oh. event. so yeah you know, gotta get gotta get that in there but yeah. dustin's gonna be there he's gonna bring some uh He's gonna bring a bunch of Sega Saturns for us to play on. <laughs> it's gonna be sweet. Maybe, maybe it's Sega, Sega 32X, Saturns. and we'll play some virtual racing. It's gonna be a good time. I don't yeah. know if Dustin wants to talk about what he might be bringing. Yeah, I can. I could talk a little bit about it. Should I, should I reveal all, or should I just should as I just long tease? as as long should as you're bringing, um, you know, uh, Legend of Dragoon, I have no problem with that. I'm oh, right. Legend of Dragoon! I love that game. That's a classic. Yep. Uh, well, right now we're we're looking at um, working at Jeff's favorite Call of Duty Ghosts. <laughs> we're, we're we're looking we're looking at that just because it's like the biggest thing in in esports right now. Uh, we gotta throw some Killer Instinct in there, the brand new Killer Instinct on Xbox One. Gotta have it. Um, and this may be expanded. This is just four off the top of my head. Uh, I want to bring back Halo. We need oh, Halo. You we just need Halo. won my heart, sir. We we need Halo, guys. Uh, I'm thinking Halo Three. Actually, I'm going to go oh, old school with wow. it. Oh, All right. All right. Oh, there it is. <laughs> a little bit of Halo action, and then uh, let's see. You know when Arya watches this, his head might explode. <laughs> when, when Chip watches this, his his head might explode. Maybe. Dave, we're sorry. He's gonna just, just spray himself in the. Oh great, we just lost Hugo. I'm, I'm gonna throw another curveball at you. I don't know. This this may be one that people are just like, what was that? But I'm thinking Shadow Run, man. Shadow Run? Yeah, I'm thinking Shadow Run. I want to throw in there, like old school console Xbox 360 Shadow Run four and four. So like the Shadow Run that could be played on the PC also with the Xbox players. Me, no, can you go cross platform on land? I don't know. Sure? I don't. I don't I'm know. Pretty, maybe. But I was thinking. Let me see. Yeah, if if we can do that, that would be sick. That would but be that's, absurd. That's a possibility. I would love uh, to shit on some people. Fantastic. Game that I've but I, I, I'm thinking a lot of stuff. I want to bring in some Mortal Kombat. Like I want to do. I want to blow it out, man. I want to blow it out. So that's just that's just a small taste of what I'm working on. So. Not to mention all the Pitco regulars, the Jackass yeah. tournaments, the Clamato Bowl, hopefully. Uh, I mean, I can't see why we wouldn't do it. The return of um, all the Pitco favorites, so. Oh, 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 Titanfall. I want to do Titanfall, too. No. Okay. I refuse. You don't We're have doing to it. I reject. We're doing it. I want to do a Titanfall tournament. Um, I'm looking. I want to say sorry. Sorry, too, for the misconvenience of uh, me disconnecting for a few seconds. You should be sorry. <laughs> it's uh, it's my, 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 my small town's local internet. It's really horrible. Oh. <laughs> As a result, Shadowrun players on Windows and Xbox 360 can no longer hear servers hosted by Microsoft. Oh, wait a second. Cross-platform. What did... I know, I'm, I'm almost positive this game is cross-platform. Because it, like, it was their attempt to see how it would work. But is it cross-platform on land, though? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it is. I don't, I don't know, know if we can swing that. Dude, I, don't I would know if we play can it, though. That. I would totally play it. But I, I still want to try it. I, it's it it's out, classic. It was a Games for Windows in the sense, because this came out in 2007, but it was a Games for Windows in the sense that you had to own Windows 7 at the time in order for... Holy shit, Windows 7 came out in 2007? I've been using it for like seven years now? That doesn't even make sense. Oh, no, like, I'm Maybe up for it suggestions Vista. It had to be too. Vista. It had to be Vista. Regardless, you had to own. You couldn't own Xbox 360 and install Shadowrun. It wouldn't happen. Like it just wouldn't let you do it. 
Just like yeah. they did those stupid stipulations with like Halo Two or whatever that came out back then. But it, right. I would definitely love to do that. I would I would buy me some chat around and shit on some console players, especially if they thought they were good. <laughs> uh, there's Nick losing his face. What? Dude, but I got tons know. of options. I'm up for suggestions as well. So yeah, if you guys need to see anything, uh, you know, feel free to leave us a line on our Facebook. Uh, shoot anybody an email. Uh, if we can incorporate the game, we will absolutely. Uh, like I said, this the the name says it all. That, that's what this that's what this event's about. So if you have any <laughs> ideas, we're open to it. I think we should do a, a Left for Dead tournament. Left for Dead? Yeah, two or one. Uh, two or one. It doesn't matter. They're both the same, anyways. But <laughs> <laughs> cookie cutter. <laughs> I well, well, no, 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 no. Okay, yeah, but no. Um, no, 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 yeah, no, yeah but no. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, since um, me and my team are the reigning champs still, of uh, the last ones you guys had. So, I, you know, that's my only first place trophy I've ever had in my entire life, compared to all my second place baseball trophies. <laughs> Maybe if you had the biceps. Yeah. I didn't have biceps I then. You need, I think I, your that's biceps the point. But on that note, I think we should wrap this up, boys. Anybody have any final thoughts for Lay of the Land, episode three? It looks like this is a wrap up. Oh my god! <laughs> Did you do that the whole time? Did you have two <laughs> pairs of glasses the whole time? On. I yeah. didn't know you had two pairs on. I, I noticed it. I noticed it. I was wondering what he was doing. <laughs> The whole time it's you've been doing good. this, we've been on another this mime for like explosion. An hour oh my with god! My mind would explode right now if he took the pair off he has on now, and there was another pair off over top. Ah, boo! I can't. Uh, <laughs> all right, so let's go around the board here. What do we got for uh, for for Dustin? What's your? How do you feel about coming back for another lay of the land with us? Man, I'm I'm down. Uh, this is a blast, man. I think we should do this every week, every day, every day. Yeah, no, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> no, that's, I'm up for it again, for sure. Right, Absolutely. What, about you, Stiggs? what do you mean? Closing thoughts. Anything? Anything you want to retouch base on? I'm pretty much looking forward to the GXL, but most of all, I'm looking forward to the new Pitco revival. I am just excited to do my whole media thing. I am just excited. So, I'm just like a kid right now. <laughs> all right, Jeff. I can't even. <laughs> He's still mind blown. He, he, can't, he can't take it right now. Oh, the whole time, man. the whole time you had two pairs of glasses. I, I, I really, I'm gonna have to rewatch this whole video to find. No, out no, no. Put them like, if you actually watch halfway, I actually went like this, like real. I quick, saw it. I saw I, it. I, I just went. All right. They haven't noticed. Nobody I'm noticed. Like, I I'm noticed. Like, I'm like, they haven't said anything. So I'm like, all right. I gotta prepare for my outro, and it looks like this. <laughs> the red. It just looks—it doesn't look real when you do it. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Oh, why God. do you even have two glasses? Like that? Actually, I don't know why I wear them, but um, these are actually the 3D glasses from you get a, from a movie theater. <laughs> well, no, they, no, no, no. These are the X-Men ones. Me and my wife went in and got them. And wow. I was just like, yeah. Nice. Nice. I was like. Uh, uh, so my closing thoughts. Uh, yeah, really pumped about the land, uh, and I, I, I think it's fair to say that I speak for the rest of the staff as well. Um, there's no one in, on our staff right now that, that isn't just excited out of their shoes. So um, we're going to bring you something special, and that, that's damn near a guarantee. Nice. Well, you know, uh, I guess my final thoughts are um, cookie cutter game design sucks. Uh, the GXL. Is gonna be height, and oh, yeah. uh, Pitco's back, baby. Pitco is back. So this is Nick Sabre Wolf Prenny with another episode of Lay of the Land. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Appreciate you guys participating with me. Um, hope to do this again soon. Signing off. Peace. Oh,